what we need to realize here is that if we have displacement and we differentiate it, so basically displacement, if you differentiate it um, and you get ds by dt, that's the same as velocity. If you differentiate again, the velocity, you differentiate the velocity to get dv by dt, then that's the same as acceleration. If you want to go back in the reverse direction, we need to do the reverse of differentiating, which is integrating. Now, in this case, we are given an expression for the velocity, and we asked to find, we're asked to find the distance travelled. So here we have velocity to find the distance travelled, we are going to need to integrate. And to find the distance travelled between t equals 1 and t equals 3, I'm going to integrate between the limits of 1 and 3. So I'm going to find the integral of the velocity with respect to time. Well, that's just the same as finding the integral from 1 to 3 of 6 plus 3t squared, which is my expression for velocity, with respect to t. If I now integrate, oh, sorry, um, if you integrate 6, that's going to give you 6t, because if you differentiate 6t, you get 6. If you integrate 3t squared, well, I'm going to get t cubed, and in fact, differentiating t cubed gives me 3t squared, so that's all I actually need to do. Put in my square brackets and then my limits, and remember, we substitute the top limit first, so I'm going to be doing basically 6 times 3 plus 3 cubed, and then I'm going to subtract the bottom limit substituted in, well, that's just 6 times 1 plus 1 cubed. So I'm going to end up with 18 plus 27 in that first bracket, take away 7. And if I add 27 and 18, that gives me 45. So I'm going to do 45, take away 7, which gives me 38. And the distance travelled then between times t equals 1 and t equals 3 is 38 metres.